Good evening, everyone. Chris here from the Understarters Order podcast. Thanks for joining us. It's another fantastic weekend. It is the Cheltenham Festival Trials weekend, along with Doncaster's Big Sky Bet handicap. And we're going to be also be covering Nace this week in com good company with Mr. Stephen Edwards. Hello, Steve. How are we doing, Chris? You all right? Everything's hunky dory here. How are you, mate? Got to be early, early up in the morning, haven't you? I've got an early one tomorrow, mate, but yeah, that won't stop us, will it? But, um, we'll try and crack on. Let's crack on. Through this uh, uh, 25 run of Gold Cup trial. <laughs> and there's somebody laughing in the background is the Andrew Cummins. Evening, gents. How are we getting on? Evening. Yes, great, buddy. I'm sure you'll rip to pieces this English racing. Along no, with no. your sidekick, who's clearly got the orange message this week, <clears throat> Declan Carroll. Yeah, where did you own it? We, we... Yeah. I, I, we need to morph your face <laughs> together. It looks like yeah. prison, prison wear. Straight out of the joint. You have to we steal all your prize money. Like, Guantanamo Bay. Bay. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Oh, Chris is frozen. That's what happened there. Uh -huh. That's a great start. Three now. That's a great Lovely start. Smile. We do it all. Yeah. Oh, look, look, he's panicking now. Look, look. Me? This is this is yeah. You're you're. Is, is he using some money in the meter boy? there, Chris? Oh my god, <laughs> Steve, are you going marching? <laughs> this is like the equivalent of a free class now. Mister Telford hasn't shown up. Someone text him. Oh, here he is. No idea what's happened there. He put some money in the meter there, would he? Yeah, I've absolutely no idea. It must be because Twitter's been seeing me off anyway. Right, are we all back? We never left, man. All oh, right, well, I'll leave you guys to it then. Let's kick on. Let's kick on this weekend. We're going to start at Cheltenham. We've got three races to cover. It's the Cotswold Chase, first of all, which is the 2.30 on Saturday. Uh, five runners. Fantastic field. Uh, well, said nobody. Shantry House is the 11 to 10 favourite with simply the bets at 100 to 30. I ride, he's probably going to go from the front at 4 to 1. And Santini and Corto Rico round out the field. Go on, let's start with you, Andy, so you can just give us a good <laughs> kick in while we're down. Well, you're down, you're not even trying to get up, it feels. It's, it's probably not much fun anymore. It's getting to the equivalent where you're kind of slagging the fat kid in PE. Like it's, it's just not fun to slag English racing anymore. Um, and it's a real pity, but. Chantry House comes in here as what? He's four to five, I believe. Um, he has three handicappers and a pensioner to beat. And it is. It's really it's really disappointing. Um, but then again, who are we missing? We're missing Protectora, who beat Native River, um, who was the Equin equivalent to the 2006 Rocky Balboa movie, just completely passed it and ended up retired a month later. Um, and... He's he's what is he's nearly a single figure price for the Gold Cup now as well off the back of that uh, beating a retired horse, which I I think is pretty crazy. Um, if Tornado Flyer, I think if he was trained in the UK, if we, if we didn't know how far down the pecking order he was in Willie Mullins's yard, he'd probably be at four to one or nine to two shot for the Gold Cup. And the reason he isn't is because we know how far down the pecking order he is in close hunting. Um, if, if he if he was to if Willie Mullins was to have a, a gold cup around Close Sutton tomorrow, there would be a, a help wanted jockeys required sign in, in his front window because there wouldn't be enough jockeys in Close Sutton to ride Tornado Flyer because he'd be that far down the bloody pecking list. And it is, it's just, and he, then again, Willie sends him for the laugh at the owner's request for a day out to Kempton to, to run into King George and he wills and wins it. Um, and it, it just doesn't look great, um, unfortunately. <laughs> So where do you go from here? Do you want to take four to five on Chantry House, who has beaten the big breakaway, who hasn't been seen since, I don't think, in a duel, um, and then was pulled up in the King George? Or do you want to take on, a ha or do you want to take him on with a handicapper like Iroy, who has admirable form, is a very, like he's a talented horse in his day. He's by no means a graded horse. Um, then after that, Cotter Rico's absolutely no chance in hell. Um, Santini... He just he his run in that handicap to start the season just wasn't good enough, and then simply the bets who, again, probably just not good enough. Pulled up behind Protector, I couldn't even finish that race in admittedly testing difficult ground. But 
money came from last time out in the handicap chase where he did run a fair race but he's by no means a grade one horse or even a grade two horse he would struggle to say i wouldn't take the four to five on chantry house solely because i don't think he's shown me enough this season uh, in beating mm -hmm. the big breakaway in a duel and getting pulled up into king george and if you even go back on his grade one form the marsh is definitely a career best but aintree he beat the shunter who took every second fence home with him and i think he beat protectorat as well he that that's actually that wasn't i think that's actually a different race i'm trying to think of there but anyway i i think i right is probably the most likely horse to run his race I, I i think you're taking a big chance on chantry house um and if you had a gun to my head i probably would take i right to to probably win the race solely because i think he is as i said the most likely horse to run his race uh, in these circumstances yeah. thanks very much and uh yeah does the, do you think the ground's playing a bit of a havoc here on the runs of field size no no sure it's good this this meeting is never on it's either the frost or the rain that claims this one so like and then we're, you just end up running out yeah. I, I know yeah but like uh, it's you know it was testing ground at lingfield last week and you just got 57 runners on the friday even though the prize money was great and now it's good ground here and the, the fields are small I, like i don't know what you just want over there I, it is like like you just want jetpacks to go around the course in or something you don't you want to hit the hit the ground i don't know but um to be honest i i don't know about the field sizes i just think there's a serious lack of staying chasers in the uk at the minute mm. um as simple as that let's go over to Declan then for his thoughts on this one yeah, look I, I missed um i missed a lot of what andy said there but i could have a guess so i'd probably repeat a lot of it um it, look it is abysmal it's really really bad now what is the excuse it, it's not that long since um the golf cup went off without an artist train runner i think quella spray might have been declared and was pulled that morning but we saw the horses you know why, why are the horses not in britain where are the horses like where would where british, british race needs to get its finger out where would it be where would jumps racing in britain be without the irish horses going over there and you know people are wondering why jetland's becoming so big um and it's all it, it, it's taken over the season but that's why the rest of it is poor unless irish horses go over it's really really poor the handicap chases in Britain, it, the whole thing just needs to be re really looked at because there's, there's very rarely an unexposed horse in there and they're basically taking turns winning. The races are very, very boring. If if Royal Begal didn't turn up last week, what were you looking at? Whose turn was it? Um, I don't even, can't even remember who came second to him, but it was obviously his turn to win last week. So but, you know, there was nothing... Look at look at the Toyestis today. Look at the Dan Moore a couple of weeks ago. Like they're really, really high class um, handicaps. But why why are they that good here now? And they're not in Britain. We know why they were poor in Ireland. You know, we sold our horses. We were a third world country. We had to sell our horses. You know, when someone bred a horse or someone won a bumper, the first thing they wanted to do was to sell the horse, get rid of it, make money ASAP. But it, it, it doesn't happen the other way. So what is the reason for such a poor standard in Britain? Like, is, is does anyone have an answer? I, I don't know what it is. We, we know there's an awful lot of problems. Like, like, prize money gets mentioned all the time, but it has to be more than that because, you know... Racing, racing's an industry. It would run without any of that. It's jobs, you know. And there's more to it. I don't know what it is because the horses will still be bred and they'll still run and they'll still keep people in jobs. But there's serious issues there, and, and I don't know what they are. And, and I, this race, it, it is laughable that it's a trial. First of all, I despise trials not being run over horse and distance. I don't know how they can be called trials. Um, what's this two furlong shorter? This is just three miles, is it? Yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah, you know, it, and it, it, it's really, really poor. Um, Chantry House has pulled up, and uh, Chantry House is sort of 
when you look at the when you glance at the form and it's a load of ones, it, it looks fine, but I don't know, can't really take to him. Um he was pulled up in the King George, went off favourite somehow. He did win the juicing last year. Um but his only other blip over fences was at Cheltenham. Um and I think that was a race that fuels the raffles won. So like I I actually if the race is so bad, I can't work out that far to five. It was really, really good value. I should take him on. Um, but he should be beating the rest of the days. Simply the bets. You know, he, he put up um, a big effort off 11 stone 10 on New Year's Day. But he was pulled up at entry in that race that um, that protector at one. I write is a decent handicapper. And he's one of the few around who may have a little bit of room to improve. But... He's, he's probably he's nine now, I think. Um, and again, you know, you'd be disappointed if he if he put it up to Shandry House. Never mind beating Santini, not the force of old. Um, Carter Rico, he was second to two for gold at Doncaster, and um, he did get twelve pound. Was pulled up the last day here, and you know it, the farm just doesn't read great. I know two for gold one last week, but you know it probably. It probably is value that four to five, but um, it's it's just really really poor. That like we you know, do, we keep hearing about January. This is Malogian. This is brutal. But, you know, the racing hasn't been bad over here. Stop throwing a blanket over the whole lot. The racing's been good here today. Was absolutely fantastic, and um, I know you guys have had people back to the race course. It was the first day that. We had a full race course today, and um, fair play to Gowron. There was probably more than ten thousand people in there today, but it was it was great. It is a big, big day, you know, and it's on a Thursday, and people still turn up. Not everything has to be on a Saturday when uh, you know, because the bookies wanted there. You 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 know, probably too many people there today. Everyone still turned up because the racing was good. Um. Yeah, look, it, it's probably Shantry House, and, and I think you said, oh, he's probably the, the, the one to follow on home, and he did you? Target yeah, I, I think he could put it up to him. I, like, I don't, like, Shantry House, he, he beat the big breakaway in a match and then got pulled up at Kempton. Like, it's not a lot, so you wouldn't be, I wouldn't be pinning my masses on it at odds on, anyway. No, and yeah. I, right, battle hardened, he's, he's, he's quite, he's a real doughty stayer. Yeah, but, what? Doubtful, but, right, doubt, that, doughty. He's a real <laughs> doughty stayer, and he, but you're talking about a golf cup trial, you know. He's not going to run any I know. Look, for, gone are the days where, you know, when Kilgrell won the golf cup, he was rated 130 or something. Like, mm. you know, that was days. I think that was the first it. great one ever raced in Cool Ground as well, you know that. Yeah, like, it's, we're not in time one or 100 to 1. Don't, 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 you know, you, you'll always get a surprise, but really, you're not going to get that this year, you know. With yeah. the quality that's in the field, you're not going to get that this year. Yeah. I really might be admirable, but he shouldn't be. He shouldn't be winning a golf cup trial, you know. Oh, what, what six, not. seven weeks out? Mm. He he shouldn't be winning it. But yeah, look, Shantry House ha has disappointed here. If he was to disappoint, he's, he's the most likely to beat him. But it's just, it's it's. It's it's we should have just done um a review of Gowron today. <laughs> oh, we, yeah. we should have we should have just done a preview of Fairy House because there's there's probably more exciting races happening there. And this is gonna be built up now. What if he does sluice up Chantry House? What happens then? What price is he? He's favourite for the Gold Cup, is he? Yeah. As of the hype. It's like yeah. that's another thing. The racing's poor in Britain at the moment. Stop hyping it up. Just stop piping it up and fix it. Stop pretending it's great because if you keep doing that, you won't fix it. Yeah. No. Jake. Well, let's come to Steve now. <laughs> you done, Dick. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> and another <laughs> thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's on, right, Steve. isn't he? Let's, let's be honest. All right. No, I just, say, I just wanted to say it. It's shite. <laughs> 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 it's was, that mute, was that mute button? 
probably, probably is a value. If you run remotely well in a King George, you'd be freeze on, wouldn't you? I mean, like, you'd be a brave man to take on, take four or five, wouldn't you? Like, opposition wise, what do you have? You got, you got all right, it was well fancy for an Ultima and was considered well in, yet couldn't beat sort of vintage clouds and happy go lucky. He deservedly got his head in front last time at Newcastle in like a listed handicap, so he's probably not sort of good enough, is it? Santini, probably unlucky not to win a gold cup many moons ago. He's still only 10, but he's just he's just done a downward spiral, isn't he? In to me, he's always been better with a lot with testing ground. So 10 to 1 a year ago, you'd be he probably would be a shade of odds on, wouldn't he? On the back of his gold cup run the year before, but Kato Rico, um, he was fourth in the Paddy Power uh, last year. That's probably his best run. He's not, he sort of, get, you get two runs a year out of him. So he, he's totally out of his depth here. Um, that leaves simply the bets. His form is very hit and miss as well, but he does leave his best runs for Cheltenham. The trip is a little unknown, but he does, he does sort of finish his race off strongly. And, um, he was second on New Year's down the top way. He did post the same racing post rating that day as when beating Imperiora in a decent race a couple of years ago. So I'm not sure how many of these. How many did Nichols take off a of wings? And about four or five, wasn't it? Um, yeah. I'm not, I'm not sure if any of them have actually won, but I think I think this one's run last time was probably the best run of any of them. The fact is that he's probably his best runs have been at Chum. I probably would. It probably would be the value angle for me, but it's 130 value against an all like challenge for us. It probably isn't, but if he's going to put a guns in mid for a bet, that would probably be uh, the way I would go. You're on mute, Chris. Yeah, Chris having a bear tonight. Yeah, I'm, 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 there's something wrong with Martin. I mean, I, 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 do you know what? You know, like the handicaps are so bad because horses are making their debut on handicaps. They're not getting an education over fences behind good horses and then going in unexposed into handicaps. They're running, making their debut in a handicap and getting absolutely whacked out of it. And we said it last week, they get into those 140s and they get dizzy then. And they're way mm. too high, you know. And they, they're they going up way too quickly and it takes way too long to come down. We're doing it, way, we're doing it wrong over here. We're doing it completely wrong. I, Send them to Ross. Then, well, bad, bad Leroy Brown has a question in there about Ross. Yeah, he did. Is any Ross or Sullivan horses over this week? Yeah, well, she's she, she's she's the the filly that we seen um, in Aintree C sessions. Now I haven't been talking to Ross, but she's gone over. Ross was actually on the radio a couple of weeks ago, and you know she has got an entry in the Triumph. But it sounds like the Fred Winter is the plan. Nice. And, she thinks she needs to go up another couple of pounds um, mm. to, to make sure she gets in. He's not yeah. worried about going up. So I, I'd say she has a chance. They're going to give it a good go. She she probably listen to him. You know, she's already beaten White Pepper. She she might He might fancy winning again tomorrow. But you know these, these young fillies there. You just don't yeah. know with them. Let's go back to that race then, Declan. Selection for you. Mm. Uh, oh, look, do you know what? We got away right, and, and and you know if if Shandry House is not himself, yeah, can say it, can say it, Andrew. Yeah, you. Could, I, I, I write and then cancel the Gold Cup and run at a fairy house or punch us down or something. <laughs> yes, to save us the boat fare. No, it's grand. I don't mind the holiday. I go. <laughs> <laughs> I'd still go to Cheltenham. Any excuse for a holiday, yeah. <laughs> what, what, can you imagine? Can you imagine no Irish horses going to Cheltenham this year? Yeah, what it'd be awful. Absolutely awful. It'd be a dreadful festival. And and dreadful. the handicapper would still whack my ratings on. Yeah. He, he's giving um Shishkin another foot pound there. <laughs> yeah. The horse rated one pound less than him by a length. Oh god. You See know. your selection for that one. If the favourites can underperform, we're simply the bets, but I won't be touching it. Yeah. yeah. All right, thanks, boys. Let's move on to the next race we're going to call, which is the Cleave Hurl. It's a grade two at Cheltenham on Saturday. Uh, over three miles, and favourite for this one, another short price favourite for the McManus team at Camp. Nicky Henderson and John Joy keeps the ride. McFabulous is four to one. Paisley Park at nine to two, and it's 25 to one for Liz Nagar Oster and 50s for Dandy Mag. 
Um, where are we where are we going to start? Let's start with you, Stephen, for this one. Uh, thoughts on McFabulous running here? Uh, yeah, I sort of asked a question earlier. I, I, I don't think any of us have ever thought he's a free miler, but um, I did at one stage. He did. Yeah, right, I'll hold we, my hands we, off. We, we questioned it after one of them Kempton runs last year, didn't we? But um, mm. I just said he hasn't got a, he hasn't got a cold cup entry. I think I'd love to see him in that with a like a lunatic pace. I think it's soon down the ground, but. Well, see, an eight-year-old now, and he's trained by Paul Nichols, so you can pretty much guess that he's not scored very well. Otherwise, he would have been over the bigger obstacles, wouldn't he? He's, um, yeah. he's, he's never tried him, has he? But um, the other thing we say about um, McFabs was, was the, the pace angle. But would Liz Nagaros going to make the make the running? Surely, be the only one. There's no, there's no mm. obvious front runner, is there? No. So, like, is is yeah. the handicapper going to go and make it for a mile? I don't know. It's very hard to get away from Champ anyway. Like the long walk was a better race than this. In that he was yeah. slick over his hurdles. He travelled strongly. He even let a couple of challenges in Tiny and Thomas Darby actually come to him on the bridle before drawing away again. You know he was never in any real danger. I was quite pleasantly shocked by it. To be honest with you, I know Andy fancied it that night. I didn't actually do the pod that week, but I guess that's the end of his chasing career, isn't it? You know after that, but um. Uh, Paisy part as much as I like the horse and the story behind his rise up the ranks. The flat spots seem to be getting, seem to be lasting a bit longer these days, don't they? You know? Yeah, um, they're getting flatter and flatter. So as much as it would be great to see Andrew Gemmell in a winner's enclosure, I just can't, I just can't see it. You know, if the ground was a cut testing, it would probably slow the others, slow the others down and become more of a positive. But um, for his customary late finish, but um, it's just not for me. You know, um, I just, I just can't see. It. I think champs of penalty kick, Chris, but um, he did get beat in the um, Ballymore, didn't he? As a novice, was it one of Noel Mees? Mm. Was it the yeah. Island, Martin Brazel? Martin Brazel, that's right, yeah. Um, obviously, one of the Cheltenham's not probably on the RSA, but um, I can't see anything beating him, boys, can you? Yeah, well, let's he, go to debt then. No, he he's famously taken advantage of pace collapses before. And I don't know where the pace is going to come from in this race. Um, he's never travelled like that, though, as he did at Ascot, has he? He did in the two-mile race last year. Remember when Nicky couldn't find a race from that time either? Yeah, he went he off quick. In the game oh. Look, I don't think it's going to be run at breakneck speed. I don't think any of them are going to want to, to take it up. You know, Dandy might. He was trained by Willie and he was running handicaps. Liz McGill's not won since he won this race. Well, I think it's the only race he's ever won. No, he, he, he won the stairs. He hasn't won since yeah, he won the stairs. Yeah, but, you know, it's bumper. It's the only ever race he's won. But I, I, I think if I think if they walk, if they crawl around here, and if this was to turn into a dash, I think my fabulous would win it. I and it's it's difficult on the new cars. But if Cobden could switch him off and, and smuggle him into the race, if he if if he could make the horse think he's only gone down to the start, and you know, and it turned into a bit of a dash up the hill, he he should be pacier than them. He should beat them in a sprint. It just depends on how the race is going to play out. Looking at look looking at the field, I don't know who's going to make out. I think. Dandy, it might be one of these, like what we see with John Bomb, where they're standing at the start. Dandy Mag might be the one to, to kick on then. Maybe try steal it, you know. Um, I, I don't think they're going to go too fast at all. Um, like Paisley Parks, like, I don't think he'd pick up if they went too slow. No, neither do I. No, and Liz Nagar Oscar probably wants it. He won't. And he wants a pace collapse as well. Mm. I'm not, I just don't know about Jam, but how can you be overly confident on this horse? How can anyone be confident with this horse? With what well, are we seeing? Can't find a race for him, for him running in two mile races, favourite for the Gold Cup, pulled up in the Gold Cup, can't find a race for him, you know, goes and, and wins a hurdle race. It, do, it, does he just is he does he just run well the first time? Does does he need to be fresh? Uh, because he's he, he, he did run a good race in that Newbury last year over two miles and then pulled up in the Gold Cup. He can't, it's probably safer for him, um, Hordles anyway, because he, he's, he's not a great jumper, he's never been a great jumper of fences. His novice season, he was abysmal. 
even in the RSA, he, he never jumped down. And he really didn't in the RSA, did he? He, he, he pecked he, twice, he, I think. He made he a horrible did. one down the back. Yeah. But after he one did, after the water, he he's got a house in his feet, yeah. But what happened is the, the two lads up front cut each other's throat. And I think, you know, I think Manella in the oil because he picked up as soon as he went by him. I don't think Champ ever quickened. He never quickened. He just, he just Gallop. was one piece. Still one of the great races, though, when, when you think back, like, whatever be back or whatever the story, but. Oh, it, was it was great. Fantastic. It was great to watch, but to analyze the race itself, I thought it wasn't a great performance from Chan. Yeah, he like just he, kept galloping for the line slowly. Like... Whereas Alho was, you know, he stopped Manel in the idle and then he picked up as soon as he went by. He but, it too close to the line. Yeah. but yeah, it, it is probably a safer option for him. I just, he's not a horse I could trust. Um, and, and I think if, if they do crawl around here, and it turned into a bit of a dash, which is is easier said than done on this course, like you know. Um I, I think Matt Fabulous could win this. He's, I still think I still think he's a non there But I don't think he might not have to get the three miles strong to win this. It reminds me of remember Twist and Davis that I was called Holstein. Wholesome Holstein. Yeah. yeah. Similar song when he just did double grain. Yeah, he won a few times here over two and a half. What is what's the two and a half miles? Um, the real kale, is it? The real kale, yeah. What do you make of this Cleveland hurdle then, Andy? I haven't really got a big opinion on it, Chris. I totally agree with the lads, though. I, I don't see much pace being on. Uh, what I would say, though, is um, Paisley Park did win a slowly run Cleve back in his day. Or, sorry, Paisley, yeah, Paisley Park when the one where he beat... Um, if the cap fits i think now he's a 10 year old now so i wouldn't expect him to be winning off a slow pace it's not going to suit any of them the fact that champ ran in over two miles last year um he's obviously quick enough so if they do go slow i think he'd be able to pick any of these up uh deck made a really really good point about him being fresh actually that that's a really good observation um that definitely could be a thing he could well be a better mm. horse fresh um which would that would be enough to stop me, you know, sticking them in a few accumulators with the three o'clock Saturday games or anything like that. But um to be honest, Chris, I, I think he just wins this race. Um do I think do I think he should be favoured for a stairs hurdle? Absolutely not. Um he's worth his place in the stairs hurdle. He's a better chance of winning the stairs hurdle than he does the gold cup. And um, so I, I understand all of that. Um, he definitely should be in the top three in the betting in the stairs hurdle. Um, his long walk win was quite impressive uh, for the way he did it. Um, beating Time Hill and Paisley Park, etc. But this is definitely a weaker race. He would have a penalty, obviously, to contend with. Or really he he's six pounds. He has to give a few of them six pounds. But I, I'd say it'd be hard to be here. And, and that's all I'm really going to say about this race. Thanks, for that, Andrew. Uh, well, let's just go through what do we think. What do we think for this one then? Steve's a big fan of Champ, aren't you? Uh, yes and no. Yeah, I think I think he should be winning this, but Dex Dex definitely brought something different to the table, which I don't think many people consider. He, he just he just might well be, and also it goes well first time, and then just bounces, you know. But let's see. Let's hope he does it anyway. It'd be nice to see him um, go to Cheltenham, wouldn't it? The race seems off the classical dream today as well, you know. As, it's lost a bit of spark, wasn't it? Unless there's anything come to all from that yes today yet or Well he was flat he was flat beforehand and now the last time I seen him in the ring was Jordan's novice season at Punchestown and he was bugging like, you know. So he absolutely he absolutely bolted up that day and he did charge the tape in, in the Supreme because of false start. So 100%. I took away I, I took away from that day at Punchestown, okay. I only backed that horse when he's acting the nutter. He was very calm today. There was two, there were two handlers, but yeah, I, I, I think you, you said Andy, he didn't even jump off in the lead. No, Paul Town and uh, Tommy and I are watching the race and like, what the hell? He's he was behind, um, possibly Royal Kahala, I think, went off to make it. Now he pulled himself to the front, but it wasn't. He had, he had like his head bowed. Um, yeah. but we, we were he, saying he does run like that yeah he does he can often do that and then he, he got a little bit keen but not keen enough to like cost him the race um, 
but we did say that we we'd be down at, at Cheltenham at, at the rails with our <laughs> with our fifty pound notes, whatever. And if he charges the tape, we'll back him. And if he doesn't, we'll just walk back up to the seats and watch the race. Yeah, well, we have the, the pink button on Betfair and the and the cash with the with the bookie rail of whatever. Would you, he does. would you be worried, lads, after that today? Then no, no, no. I, I, with that horse, Good race. with that horse, yeah, I'd, put, I'd be prepared to put a line through that. But with him, I walked out front stand that day and I said. I'll only ever back him if he's booking and kicking in the ring. He wasn't. I was never going to back him today, anyway, at that price. Um, but he wasn't doing that today, so I didn't think I didn't think he would win then. But I wouldn't be worried. I wouldn't be backing him anti post. I would not be making my mind up till I'm standing at the ring in Cheltenham. And if he's acting the no case, absolutely I'll get on. Back him then. And then, <laughs> I'll back him. I'll one back one. him when he's fucking and kicking in the ring, and then when he bowls on the way to the start, and he drifts, I'll back him again. <laughs> <laughs> he might go. Build, might be a fresh horse himself. Eh? He goes well first time. Yeah, yeah, no, of, it, it, when he won the Supreme, he got to the Supreme. He had a hard yeah, race a, for that. I think yeah, it was Armand. Like the two of them had a, a right ding dong up the straight in Leopardstown, and that he was great just, race, yeah. just out battled them. And then he went from the Supreme. He went to Punchestown, and he was really good at Punchestown. Really, really good, but he was wild, absolutely mm. wild in the in the ring. So let's keep an eye out for him at Cheltenham, booking and kicking, and then get them. Yeah, well, if we tie him, Chris, because you won't be there. We, you know, you're in school that day. So if, <laughs> if you think about it, we'll text you and go, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, or does just go? He might be quite as a mouse. Maybe like, oh, Chris, he's gone mad. He's gone, man. <laughs> yeah, I'll see the message after four thirty when you think I always clock off anywhere. <laughs> the phone <laughs> stays off during Cheltenham week anyway. <laughs> right, let's skip on from that Cleve Hurdle, boys. Uh let's move on to the Ballymore, the next race that we're going to be covering at Cheltenham. Uh right, well, it's not too bad of a race. Uh, a lot of interesting ones in here. They all come in here all having won quite a few races between them. Hillcrest is now the favourite. Well, he's battling now with joint favourites and with Balco Coastal. Um, Hillcrest has been impressive in his last few starts. North Lodge, he was a winner on debut for Alan King. Uh, he's in the different kind, brings in uh, form figures of five wins. Of five wins uh, there for Donald and Donald McCain and Brian Hughes. Picana's at 12s as well, and Harper's Brook rounds out the field at 25 to 1. Um, Balco Coastal is one that we mentioned a couple of times, haven't we, Andrew? I've come to you first. Didn't you say it was a bit of a head case? I didn't necessarily call him a head case. He really, um, he actually really impressed me when he won a an all weather bumper at Kempton last year. Um, and the reason he kind of came to, uh, he came to my eye originally. He was second in a point to point to uh, gentleman's game. I was about to say Braveman's game, uh, to gentleman's game. And then Mouse Morris suddenly decided he thought he was a stayer after winning a two mile cork maiden hurdle by half the track. Um, so he won a, a Kempton bumper really easily. Uh, ran okay without being unremark or without being remarkable in the the entry bumper, and he's won two races so far this season, um in in pretty fair fashion. Uh, the mark of one thirty is not excessive. Um, it's probably fair. The likelihood is he will be, he'd be able to pro- progress off this mark, um, and with the kind of strength and depth that Nicky Henderson does have in the novice hurdle ranks, with your Constitution Hill, John Bond, uh, walking on air. And uh, I think I'm missing one more. There's possibly one more. It could be this lad. Um, his mark of 130 is very attractive. And he would be my idea if they could, you know, find a, a good claimer. He'd be my idea of a, of a proper horse for the Martin Pipe, uh, especially going up and trip. This particular race might blow that out of the water because if he does win this, he's probably running into Ballymore. Um. Now, with that said, this is a race which I it kind of annoys me because it's a grade two, but the likes of Hillcrest, who is a three-time winner, has to carry 11 stone 10, uh, despite the fact that I don't think he's ever ran in a graded race. I, I believe it was listed uh, was the race was, yeah. when, he beat, when he beat Ion Maximus. Um, mm. Now, Ion Maximus was rated, I believe, like 127. And Hillcrest was rated on that day around a similar. Um, I'm just checking now for you guys. Hillcrest was one twenty eight, yeah, one two eight and one two nine. 
Um, and both horses got absolutely clobbered because they finished ahead of a horse who was probably deemed to have run to his mark. Um, so Hillcrest is now a 139 horse. Again, that's well up to inter- well open to interpretation. Um, I say every single week, 11 stone 10 gets you beat in a race like this, unless you're John Bon. Um, mm-hmm. It's really, really difficult. Even a different kind who's been really, really, really well campaigned by Donald McCain. You know, an absolute winning machine, winning at short prices left right and center but the owners would have undoubtedly despite probably racing for a score every other week and um, i've had a lot of fun from and um, he's a 132 horse he clearly knows how to win he definitely represents probably the best value in the field at seven to one but the 11 stone eight in a much more competitive race is a quite it's you kind of have to throw your nose up at it um harper's brook off 123 you would assume will find life difficult here North Lodge won the day we were at Aintree. Kind of picked up the pieces. It was a good race to win on debut. Um, he beat a Coolmore horse, I believe, actually. Bombs away, who's sadly yeah, no longer with Yeah, he's, he's sadly no longer with us. Mm. Um, and then he beat a Hemmings horse, who I believe was second to John Bond. Or Richmond Lodge. Richmond, Lodge. Richmond, yeah, Rich, a... Rich, yeah. So that form's okay, but I have a feeling he might have been a bit flattered at Aintree. Uh, because King said adjusted. he might run on Sunday as well, Andy. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt. There's a no, race no, no. That, that's and um, that would probably be more suitable for him. I'd probably take up that option to be honest. I, I think mm. he kind of fell in at entry, and this kind of looks like a step too far, too soon for him. Uh, Picana again, one twenty nine, but hasn't really done a lot wrong. He is an eight year old. He's been hard to train, and um, but he is probably worth his light uh, place in this lineup at this point in time because they'd want to crack on with him. He obviously hasn't been the easiest to train. So I do think a different kind is probably the value here at seven to one. I, I think he'd be able to take the step up in class in his stride because he's so much experience. But Balco Coastal is easily the one I'm most interested in. And part of me kind of just wants him to run well because I'd I'd love to see him in a Martin Pipe, just bring him along gradually. Especially with Nicky Henderson having so much strength and depth in the novice hurdle division. Just just do what Willie does, but do what Gordon does, just be a scumbag and get this lad just buried. You know, get him in the Martin Pipe, uh-huh. bring him along, let him let him go to Aintree and punch us down. Um, you know, just bring him along at his own pace because he he's threatening that. Um and I, I, I really, really like him and I think he'd be he'd have a lovely profile for the Martin Pipe and this will get him um mm. You know, I don't think, are the entries out for the Martin Pipe? I don't think they are. No, it's not. No, no, no. no, no yeah, yeah. So I just, um, this is the horse I'd be looking out for, though, because that 130, you know, he runs well here. You know, at worst, he gets 136, 137, but with a progressive profile. Um, I, I just think that would be a nice long-term target for him. Um, so they, they're the two horses I'd be looking for here, Chris. But I think the value, as I said, is, is probably with a different kind. Cheers, Andrew. Um, Stephen, what's your take on this one? Um, did you go for Balco, uh, Andy? Did you? Or... Um, I look I, seven to four. I think he's the most likely winner because he's not yeah. like eleven stone five is probably fair on what he's done. But I'd probably you were kind of making a case for it each way there, Andy. Though, wouldn't you? Just <laughs> doing well. yeah, just no because it's yeah seven to four. But I want him to run well. I want to back yeah. Martin Pipe. I don't want. I don't, don't want to back him each way. Don't, don't blow anyway. the mark. Just <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just just run. So back him each nice. way. Run nice. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Dead heat though. Each way. Yeah, like a different kind is the winning machine, and he's like so. Just let him yeah. win, and maybe just you know staying on third, and we get the Martin Pipe off one thirty five, one thirty six, and we'll 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 have a day. So. All you people listening out there, back to seven to four shot <laughs> each way. <laughs> I never said that. Anyway, <laughs> Go on. anyway yeah, I've pretty much written down more or less what Andy said in different ways. But I, I look, this is it looked like a match didn't it, with a betting at first. But I actually think as you look more into it, maybe more involved in the night meets the eye. But Belco Coastal, I'm not actually keen on. Um, he strikes me as a bit of a bit of a park flat track bully. Um, Hence, sort of the bumper run on the sand, and then um, he's won a couple of little races this year. But I backed him in the entry bumper last year, and he was backed off the balls as if he was a world beater. And he probably still could turn out to be the fact that he, like, he went off, he was in about five to four just before the off. But um, he did run wide a lot of the way, but he found absolutely nothing when um, when push came to shove. And um, I just, I just, I just think if, if you're gonna get caught out, them sort of horses, Cheltenham will definitely catch you out. Um, he'll he'll press six plenty of boxes. He's a cool winner. He's shown plenty of but under pressure. Obviously, the, the five pound Andy pointed out is a 
could be a bit of a negative. It's a big, it's quite a big thing, isn't it? But he did beat one of Nicky's last time in Iron Maximum. So, so Anderson does have a guide with Balco, but um, and one of Dex's horses was third that day. Get a tonic. Um, the Alan King also, like we pointed out, now has a bit of substance to the form because of Richmond's Lake second last week behind John Bond. The ground that day was really, really bad. So it'd be interesting to see how he goes like with better, better underfoot conditions. Um, he did travel well that day, though, and um, the extra, dis- extra distance shouldn't be a problem. The King has also said that um, he's entered at Fontwell on Sunday, so be interesting to see where he runs. But um, I'm really in the Hillcrest uh, camp, Chris. I just think the fact he's got course form, the weight, obviously, the extra five pounds are worry, but I just think if Bel- Belco... Belco Coastal on a, on a proper proper uh, national one track, he could get caught out around here. Thanks very much, Stephen. Hillcrest for Steve. He's going for the Trevor Hemmings Cause Declan, we're with you now. Yeah, look, the, the lads have pretty much covered it. Obviously, Hillcrest shaping three on the hurdles. Um, and he won well the last day, beating I am Maximus. And, and yeah, I am a big fan of, of Get a Tonic. Um, so, obviously, that... Um, that got me attention when, when Hillcrest won that, that race well. Uh, Bagel cost two from two over hurdles. Frere Dame um, has followed up since. Like, the form is, is decent enough. Compared to, like, Picana's form, does, I'm not sure there's many winners in behind Picana. Um, and I'll probably say this every week, but I do like I do like when horses have beaten, horses have gone on to win. Um, and I, I don't really care at what level it's at. Uh, I just like to see them them winning again. Um, a different kind. He's won at very short odds, but it, uh, you know, Green Book, who was actually odds on the day a different kind won, he has followed up twice. Um, and the rest of the race is a different kind has won. He's been very, very short. I, I think he has a chance here, but I probably sway towards North Lodge. Um, he did beat Richmond Hill that day at entry. Um or Richmond or is it Richmond Hill or Richmond Lake? Richmond Hill I'm calling them on Lake. Richmond Lake. Richmond Lake. <laughs> <laughs> Just keep calling him Richmond Hill so he'll have to change his name. <laughs> uh, and he was second to to John Bond. By the way, really good performance by John Bond. Got an awful lot of stick. Um but I thought he picked up well once he got a, a couple of slaps of the Shillelagh and um yeah, I, like there was the penalty as well. He didn't have the cleanest of runs through. I think he he jumped into the back of one of them, and um, maybe three out. Like he lost a bit of momentum. I thought it was quite an impressive performance. And as Andy said straight after, it, you know, he showed he'll, he he has what it takes for a battle too. And um, the head came up slightly and and out to the right just a little bit, but you know. Hopefully he's learned from that and it'll be down down a bit lower if he does get into a battle the next day. So um you know on that on that run from Richmond Hill I'll I'll probably sway towards North Lodge here. Thanks very much, Declan. Let's go over the selections for that one then, lads. Richmond Hill <laughs> Richmond Lake. Oh, sorry, <laughs> Richmond Lake. <laughs> so definitely will forever be Richmond Hill on this podcast now. Make sure he jumps the fence, Richmond Lake. Oh, yeah, he's a big, big boy. He's a big ladder. Yeah. Uh, Stephen, yours? Uh, Hillcrest boringly, mate. Hillcrest boringly. Uh, Only because I think North Lodge will go Sunday. That's the only reason, I think. I, I do agree with Deck. I think North Lodge has got a big chance. but yeah. I don't think he'll run. Andrew, I think the value is with a different kind, but we want to see Balco Coastal running a running a sneaky one for the Martin Pipe. Yeah, hundred percent, a little one. Uh, right, well, just a little mention of the competition that we've got running at the minute. We're going to announce the winner after this next race at Doncaster, which is the Skybet Handicap Chase. So, if you've tuned in just for that, did, well, did, thanks did, for tuning in. Hang on, Chris. You mentioned gentleman's game, Andy. Was that in? In this race, at the last yeah, race. Balco Balco Costa was second to him uh, in a point to point. In a point to point. Mm. <laughs> I well, the race was on today. I got a fit of laughter in the stand, and I just kept thinking of you, Colin, Cape 
brave gentleman's game. Cape brave man, gentleman's game. Well, uh, did, did, you see the photos, <laughs> did you see the photograph we took of gentleman's game today? He was looking he well was looking at me like, get me out of this movie. <laughs> <laughs> this fella's running me over hurdles again. Get me over a fence. Me over again. <laughs> <laughs> he thinks I'm a stare. I won a court he made my 30 lengths over two miles. He's on the same hurdler. I just won. <laughs> I'm an arkle horse. Get me in the arkle. <laughs> Get me out of this movie, bud, will you? <laughs> <laughs> oh. He doesn't half have a laugh, Declan, on this. Crass. <laughs> oh, my. I don't even have the old laugh. <laughs> oh, wow, wow, wow. All uh, right. Uh, yeah, competition's coming up after this next race, guys. So keep your Make ears sure you back for that. Yeah. Uh, Richie Reggie, well, Reggie's having a good laugh at you there anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but it was uh, right, though. He did. He did. He won a cork maiden hurdle over two miles by yeah. quite literally a furlong. <laughs> Like, yeah, I'm I'm there, count them again. I'm going yeah. to look it up now. Still get, get, them, get the abacus out and count and those. Then he, went, anyway. he went straight into the, the solicitor's novice hurdle over two miles six. Like, <laughs> I don't, he like, was, I, and he was torn apart and he ran a big race. He ran a second. He was second to Gallardo Manil. He ran a blinder, but like he wasn't slow. He clearly wasn't slow. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. Anyway. <that's> anyway. <laughs> on to the... the uh, <laughs> it's one of the... One of the this is probably one of the bigger races of, of Doncaster year. I know it's only a, a listed handicap chase, but it does first centerpiece of the Doncaster jump um, season. Um, it's Fair the Sky Bet. Well. Yeah, it's the listed handicap chase here. It's the Sky Bet chase. Uh, it's got it's attracted a decent field. A lot of handicappers there. Uh, Fusel Raffles. One that tell us, Stephen tell us who you fancy, Chris. Tell us who I fancy. Oh, tell us who you fancy. Go on. Captain Nord. You on, you've been on this all week, one. Yeah, I, I had a I had a play on it last week, nine to one, Captain Nord. Uh, he's now into sixes around fives. Uh, there's no, there's no, there's no like real like form lines and things. I just think he's he's last year he finished third in this. He ran a great race. Um, I just thought the ground, uh, well, a bit definitely the last time was against him, and last year in this went a little bit against him. I think the good ground this year is going to be a little bit better for him. Um, he's off ten pounds lighter. The, he's, his handicap mark is ten pounds less than he was last year, and he's, he's, he's coming in here carrying ten stone. Uh, that, there's this, this the simple reasons of looking like the horse looks very well handicapped, and he could win a race like this. That is my only reasoning surrounding this. I feel like he is one of those horses who who tends to come better this side of Christmas in, in his runs. Um, so that's the only reason, really, for for Captain Nord. But he, he's obviously you can see my reasoning surrounding it. It's it's because he's been dropped ten pounds in the handicap, and he is now, uh, you know, he's racing on ground that I think he'll do better on. So he's my selection anyway. Uh, that's the only reasons. Well, let's go on to your selections then, Declan. Have you got on for this? Did you not hear me slating British handicap earlier? <laughs> yeah, there so we let's move on from Declan then. Uh, tell, tell us more, Declan. Tell us um, more. The, I, I, I landed on um, the Paul Nichols cap course. Uh, he, he's rated 139. He won off 131 at Newbury. I think there's still room for improvement. He, he's obviously been fragile or something. He, he's been he's been off a couple of times. Uh, it's only a sixth, six start over fences so I, I think there could be still some room he hasn't got into those dizzy 140s uh, not just yet so that might be the problem is he could just finish this and end up in the 140s that, that's the problem with the handicapper over there but um, there might be there might be room for one more win because a lot of them do be you know quite exposed um, a lot of them have been around and running their races so uh, he I think there could be one more winning him before he has to start coming back down to the, you know, the one tour Yeah. Did what? What was the race call that he won last time? Was it the Peter O'Sullivan? Yeah, it was, wasn't it? It's probably named after a bookmaker. It was probably like throw all your oh. chips and red something. <laughs> no, it was the Peter O'Sullivan Memorial anyway. Throw all your chips and red. They give you a free spin. Give us your money. Thanks very much. 
and I'll be playing a lot. I think you probably have a field there, just like saying different random names of races like that, bro. <laughs> over here in the UK, it's ridiculous. Give us uh, a <laughs> Got get point, get points, drink points, get drunk, and gamble more. Uh, That's basically that's what it. Saturday television is now. You know, gamble, so, yeah. yeah, but do it responsibly, but have more points. Mm. And and have another bet, but responsibly. A... But give us all your money. <laughs> fucking, it's a fucking uh, joke. It is. Uh, here. <laughs> drink, drink ten points. Take your top off and put it all on red. Handicap <laughs> chase. Yeah, before you go out there and have a fight, give us your money. We'll mind it for you while you're out there fighting. You don't want to lose it out there. Do you lose it in here? Novice chase. <laughs> 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 Okay. Right. That, that's we've gone way off tangent here, <laughs> Andrew. Okay. Um, yeah. See, I need uh, to keep the reins here. I need to start muting. Yeah, you're, 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 you're losing now. order. <laughs> um, I oh, actually, to be honest, I don't think this is a bad race. Um, you know, you're basically fifty-seven thousand pounds to the winner. Um, it's a pretty much a staple in the calendar, and it's yeah, it's just a pity it has a bad name. That's all. Um. But it's always a good race. I think it. I, I'm not sure. The Grintorp is is later in the calendar, isn't it? it it's yeah, closer. Yeah, it's in March. Yeah. yeah, that race always gets bludgeoned by Cheltenham. Um, I this is this is a pretty good renewal though. Um, I do see DBC in here. Uh, really, really hard to train. And now with the skeletons, um, famous for being a half brother to Don Polly and Politess, and I always end up getting involved. That that family, if it's Don Polly, if it's DBC, if it's Politess, I back them all. I followed them until I die. Um, I won't be back in DBC here. He's probably he'll probably oh. be in front two. No, he'd probably be in front two out, and then uh, you, you know, know what yourself, happens now. You know yourself like his his last run. Um, you came there swinging. He came there swinging, but um. Very surprisingly, he got sent from home at like the palm fences, and then didn't quite get up the hill. Well, there's nothing uh, to brag about. Down. I've seen he was on the he was on the jockey. <laughs> anyway, but um, home. yeah, he, he's back from like it. Apparently, it's first time wind surgery. Mm. Like this horse hasn't ran in the best part of a year. That wind surgery could have happened. I, I'm assuming that happened in the summer. Um, mm. the one I'm with is actually down the bottom of the weight. It's just over your one, Chris. Hurricane Harvey. Um, again. I tipped this horse this time last year. Um, well, not quite this time last year, but he did. He beat Melanford in the novice chase over the course and distance. Um, now his jumping has kind of gone to pieces some in stages before that, uh, or since that really. Um, you know, obviously notably behind remastered at Ascot, and he didn't jump too well at Cheltenham last time out. Um, on his run at Wing Canton in November, though, when he was beaten by Rocco, he ran pretty well. Uh, he jumped quite well. He was beaten favour that day, but did finish third. He's four pounds below that today. Uh, he's in here off 132, which is 12 pounds below his peak chase rating. I know, as, as Dex said, they get dizzy in the 140s. Um, and th this horse is probably a good example of it, but he's now down to 132, which I think is a really, really workable mark. And if you're getting 20 to 1, uh, about a horse that has already won over the course and distance and has, you know, shown at least fair form as late as November, um, I do think he's overpriced. I think he'd be ridden cold and, and ridden to come home well. He he probably it would might be a bit more ide uh, ideal if he jumped a bit better at Cheltenham last time out because maybe a confidence booster in a small field, which is basically any race ever that's ran over there, um, mm -hmm. you know, one of these races every 10 seconds like planes going out of Heathrow but um 20 to 1 is a very fair price 10 stone tree 132 very workable mark he's won at the track I just think it's a it's a fair each way back thanks Andy uh, Stephen uh trappy race I mean I was just looking at the class angles but your fusil raffles obviously he was mixing it with Sean Trias who we was talking about earlier in last year's uh juice and um Midnight Shadow looked like them two Cheltenham races have got taken a serious amount out of him. He's going to toe to toe with Cole cool Cody twice over two and a half mile around there. 11 stone 12 edge. It's just going to be too much, isn't it? Mm. Um, I'm looking at Canelo. It's not so much of what it's done recently. The form was a bit, a bit skewed with, but he won last year's Roland Merrick 
um, beat Snow Leopard Des, who won at Aintree the day when we was there. Uh, he's since run behind that horse again, but he's eleven pound. He ran in this race last year. He ran behind Ziggy's boy, about who Alan King actually trains himself. But um, he's carrying eleven pound less on Saturday, and I just think ten eight's a nice weight. Um, with the weight concession from last year, I just think twelve for Wiener one's not is a decent bit of value if he can get anywhere near his best form of old, you know. But mm. it's it's a lottery, Chris, for me. Um, yeah, he falls under the same camp as Captain Ord, really, because Captain Ord was third just in front of Canelo. Does, yeah, I overlooked um, it, um, yeah. Storm Control, like, uh, mm. got a £10 claim on it, he's carrying less than 10 stone. Um, it would have surprised me if something like that went and won this, you know? Yeah. So it's Canelo for Stephen, it's Captain Ord for myself. Andrew, your selection? Hurricane Harvey. Okay, now and Declan? It was uh, Cap Course. Cap course, cap course for Declan. Right, we're coming over to the Irish side of the sea now. Uh, we're going over to Nace on Sunday. Uh, let's see who's commenting here. Oh, no, it's another bot. I've tried to kick all these bots. I'm doing my head in now. Uh, right, we're going to Nace now. It is the la uh, sorry, we're going to go to the limestone lad first. I have got that right, haven't I, lads? Limestone lad first. Yeah, yeah you give away these tickets I want there before we get it stuck into the race. The tickets. Oh, dear. Thank God. All, all hands up in the area to Andy and Declan who've provided these tickets for the, the podcast to give away this to you. So a big thumbs up to you guys. Uh, thanks for everybody who's entered the competition. It's a, a good, good laugh. Uh, great to share some memories as well of some great horses down the line. Uh, but one that really took it for us is um, a horse that practically nearly died at Cheltenham in 2018. And that was Ed Wolf winning the Gold Cup in 2018. And that was mentioned by uh, Sarah Breen. So if Sarah Breen's watching tonight, you need to get in touch with us at the podcast, Sarah. And then two tickets are yours for Saturday at the Dublin Racing Festival. So, yeah, congratulations, Sarah. And yeah. if you're not watching, well, yeah. Sarah. <laughs> yeah, that's one that really got it. Do you remember that race, that Ed Wolf, Ed Wolf race, Deck? Yeah, yeah. Huh. Yeah, oh yeah, I think it was, uh, Derek O'Connor, Red Cap. Yeah, mm. I think it was just coming in. Typically. Right, well done, sir. Anyway, so um, yeah, get in touch with us, and you will get those tickets over to you. You can meet Andy and Declan as well. I think they're going, aren't you, boys? Yeah, you oh, get absolutely. The point. <laughs> right, have a taken with them. No, I'm mean, we'd, we'd be <laughs> delighted to have a point with anyone who's around. Yeah. That's it. Wouldn't, wouldn't throw an nose at that. No, mm. thing about the thing about going to the race course is you, you do meet you meet good people, people who are happy to be there, who want to be there. You know that the there for the horses, and you just get to have great chats. Yeah, 100%. You know, meet me, you know, meet people every week. I don't know their names, but <laughs> I'm hoping somebody calls these people some, some yeah. week so I learn their name. But uh, it's it's nice. You just go and meet the same faces again and again, and and. You know, good chats about racing. Uh, Turlo, Turlo's put Thorn old beer mat in for the runners up, lads. Does he think we're made of money? That means we're sending out about 50, 50 different letters to 50 different people, uh -huh. costing about over 150 quid. Does he think we're made of yeah, money? Only said I, think, I think he deserves it. I think he deserves them for being cheeky. Yeah, yeah, yeah get them to Turlo. He only said me tree. <laughs> what was it meant to do with tree? What are you meant to do with me? I was drinking here that night. <laughs> me table yeah, real. Well, give over. All right. Yeah, cheeky boys. Right, next up. It actually, I am wrong. It's not the limestone lad next. It's the beginner's novice chase at Ness at 110 on Sunday. Beginner's novice one. chase. Yeah, the beginner's novice chase. I am wrong. Sorry, boys. Uh, yeah, we are littered here with some decent entries. Um, Giggins down have three of them with Fury Road, Farquhar Delers, and Farouk Dillon. Sorry, four with uh, Run Route One, Run Wild Fred as well. M Willie Mullins is in there with Stratum, and Statler is in there. Um, even Vanilla is in there for Gavin Cromwell. Uh, what do we fancy here, boys? Well, I'll come over to the Irish guys first, so uh, let's go to you, Deck, first. Yeah, well, I think Vanilla is he's a definite runner, he is. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, he's the only one I know who's a definite runner. Look, his farm was. It, it was boot, he was torn at Epperson on the last day to Fury Road, but his form was boosted by Bally Shannon Rose winning last week. Um, who, by the way, 
you know, could have a great chance in the Irish National. She's skipping Cheltenham. She's going to run in the Mare's Chase at Limerick. I think that's on the Sunday after the festival. Yeah. And then she'll go for the Irish National. Um, she, she's a big, big mare. I, I seen her that day. She fell behind Vanillier and she was huge. Like She's she's going to get better and better. Um, Vanillier was good that day at Punchestown. Were you there that day? And it was the day before, I think. Was it was the, No, that was Vanillier. Yeah, we were there. You were there, were yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Valley Shannon Rose. Yeah, she yeah. she took a hard fall, but the Vanille was going to win the race. Uh, he he has been beaten by Fury Road since, and look, I think Fury Road is. I gave I gave him a good bit of stick there earlier on in the season, but he's looking like a decent horse now. He won over three miles at Leperstown. I thought you the old Fort Laney. I don't know what they call it now. We're out. It's I tell you what, it's not sponsored by a bookies. It's sponsored. <laughs> Probably a hotel, um, and he was toured in the Drinmore before that. I think it's it's really good form. Uh, if he was to turn up here, I think he'd be hard to beat. I don't know whether he will. I'd imagine he goes to Leopardstown. Is he in that? Um, the PJ Moriarty, Andy. Who is this now? Fury Road. Um, I'd say he is. I'll, I'll yeah, check. I, I I'll just keep talking. Through. I'll tell you if he is or not. He's yeah, shorter like than Beacon's Edge now, isn't he? In a betting for Cheltenham, I mean, they flip flops. Beacon's Edge was a bit shorter last week, but um, Fury Road's there's not a lot, there. yeah. There's not a lot between them, though. So, there's, there's not a lot between them. You know, you'd imagine they're both going for the RSA, but I, you know, if you're, I, I, if he needs another run, I'd say, I'd say he'll go for the two mile fire rather than the three miles. Like, you know, it, it, sometimes the further they go, it, it just takes longer to recover. Um, do you think Farouk will be... go down the four-mile route? Farouk, Farouk, do you think he'll go down the four-mile route? He probably will, yeah. I bet him for the Albert Bartlett last year and he pulled him out and I just, I just yeah. felt that he was just staying all day. You know, like well, I, look, I don't know. He was pipped, he was pipped in Limerick, wasn't he, by Master yeah. McShee, you know? Yeah, over a trip far too short. They, they, could go in the Irish, they, could, they could go for the Irish National as well. Like they've run well Fred for the four-miler. He's nailed on for that. And I don't think they'd you know, I'd rather try and win half a million. I know it's O'Leary, you know, they mightn't care, they might rather a festival winner, but um That man, that man loves money. He hates spending <laughs> it. <laughs> he hates spending it. That man, wherever it's the cheapest entry, that horse is gone. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Never mind the winnings, it's it's the less he has to spend. <laughs> um look this this you know for the land, I don't know, he was picked by Master McShee in the two and a half mile grade one at Limerick. And I don't think the form of his beginners is, is that strong. So I, I really don't know about him. He could be the one that I was saying Fury Road was going to be, where he just keep going off favourite for these races and never win one. And if, yeah. eventually, oh, it'd be start, what's your man's name? Yates, is it? Darren Yates. Yeah, yeah he'll boy it for half. D.Y. Day. Yeah, he'll end up involved in the syndicate. <laughs> 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 he'll end up in the race. <laughs> Um, so I, I don't think he's I think we've a we've a classy bunch. The beacon edges, the fury roads, vanilla oh. I don't think he's quite up to, to, to that standard. He's slightly below. That's why he would probably go the four miler <laughs> if he goes to Cheltenham, whereas Fury Road Beacon Edge there, RSA horses, I'd go the Irish Grand National with Vanilla personally. What price would sorry to cut off Harsh there, Dak. If you put Vanilla or um, who else we got in here? Vanillier, Beacon Edge, uh, Fruit Delane. If you threw them in the Cotswold Chase, just for argument's sake, like, it'd, like where they, would they? We... They oh, probably win by half the track, <laughs> but, you, but they would not be favourite. They wouldn't be favourite now. I think Beacon Edge is half our Chantry House. If he was on a going day, he can be like he he ha, like you can see his mind is trickling. It's nearly there. He's nearly at the stage. It's like I can go home here. Right, edge. Yeah. Yeah, he, could, he, he was he was a senior hurdler. Mm. He didn't go from novice hurdles, but he's a classy animal. I think he, he is. Yeah, he's a classy animal. I hope mm. I hope he doesn't figure out. He still gets the fish <laughs> fingers for dinner. <laughs> 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 fish finger sandwiches. Um, mm. with the, and, and bent on very very impressive on Chase debut. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, I was taken with that. Yeah. You know, the, the guy was out with the abacus again, like. Using the little horse on the screen just to go across counting one, two, 21 lengths. 
And he could take some stopping here if he turns up. He could take some stopping wherever he goes. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Like, He's a likely front, front, front runner in the field, isn't it? Sorry? He's a likely front, front runner when you're looking through the others. Yeah, like, the thing about... It's hard to know because he was just better than them. Mm. You know, Willies, if they're better than them, they will just make the run. Like, they make the just, just, like, the, Yeah, the instructions are you win the race. Doesn't matter how you do it, you just win the race. Yeah, the other, you, you're just there's, there's no point going too slow for the horse. So mm. when they're that much better, they just go and, and, and make the run. But you know what? Wait, he has Willie has that jungle boogie as well, doesn't he? Jungle mm. boogie. So hard to try, where, yeah. You know, where is he going to spit all this? Jungle, jungle boogies. He was in the betting for the article. I thought he was a four miler horse. He sent you some tree. Does he? Yeah, I think well, he does. Really, yeah. really doesn't mind spending the money. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> he's <laughs> a bit like the buggy. You, Malcolm Denmark, give us your money there. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Entered in every, he's entered in the Derby. <laughs> <laughs> and Willie. <laughs> um, and then, like, he could go to the RSA, Gallop and Deschamps. I, I really hope Gallop and Deschamps goes. Goes back for the the Jewson. Um and Benton could be an RSA horse. It's it's, it's hard it's really. Like look at looking down, Statler's in here as well. Where is he going? Is he an RSA <laughs> or a, a farm or a horse? Like like they can't. Why you? It's absolutely ridiculous that we're talking about horses of this quality being farm oiler horses. That is off the <laughs> wall that we're talking about. That it's a grade two over. Four fucking miles for amateur jockeys. Like horses of this class should not, they should, they should never be thinking. Like that's like a that's like a pensioner's. That's like the fellow who got kept back in skill. He's a bit dumb, like you know. Run him and that. That they're they're all our horses. We should never. It's absolutely ridiculous. And this is the Cheltenham hype thing. And I uh, hear we go. Stop. You lads sort out your racing over there. This might not happen because we've so many horses like we're just fucking spreading them around there. It's 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 ridiculous that you're talking about horses this well that we're going, is he going to the RSA or the farm oiler? None of them should ever be thinking about the farm oiler. Hey. You know? You're thinking about the farm oiler going to Grand National, Irish National. Yeah, for, 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 who wants to win a grade two over four miles for amateur jockeys is absolutely off the wall. God like, knows. Farmers, that should be farmers' horses. Jeremy that should Cook be some fella who found something down the back of the barn, turned out to be a bit of a tour of bread, and he's like, oh, do you know what? I'll run him away. You know, I've got to run him away. Was it Boston Bob? It was a while Was it Boston Bob? No. Back in, back um, in focus, was it? Back in, back focus, in focus, focus. Yeah, yeah he ran down to Fino Bay. But the Fino Bay idled in front. She dropped the whip or something. Was it Nina or someone? No, Nina. Yeah, she. You know, he picked up as soon as he went. Boy, she idled. Uh, Railing in the air. It go. was like the Fino Bay. Davy dropped. Davy dropped the whip. Boston in, Bob fell in the RSA in the next race. No, the, Boston Bob fell in the RSA. Lord Windermere won it. But Davy rode the Fino Bay in the Troy Town, and he dropped the whip. So he used his hand, and he slapped the horse on the arse with his hand. Imagine doing that on ITV. Oh, bang. <laughs> bang for life. Anyway, look, there's Max Flamingo's in here. He's going to win a big handicap over the spring. Jot that down now. Put a little reminder. Put him into your tracker. Max Flamingo he's, has a big one in him. He's in my tracker already. Yeah. He's a good horse. Um, he, he has one in him. Definitely. He he's And he's going the, the right way about it. I think he ran the grade one the last day. Um. He's just finishing down the field. The way Willie does it with his is um the way he's all of a friend at the part actually. He was very mm. unlucky today. Everglow's in here now. He was the one who was beaten by and bent on. Look, I don't know. I suppose Fury Road sets the standard. Vanillier is definitely going to turn up, but it's very, very intriguing. Um we don't know who's gonna turn up. And we don't know how good some of them are. But yeah, look, Fury Road sets the standard. You'd have to say on, on what he's achieved. On a form, he should beat the rest of them, but we just don't know. You know, how good is Statler, how good is him bent on. Um but I think Fury Road has the beatings of Vanillier. Fury Road. Thanks very much, Doug. Andy. There's one like Declan just mentioned him over briefly, and I, I really fancy him because he's gonna be a, a scandalous price here. He's gonna be double figure price. Um, and it is Max Flamingo. 
Um, he only not, has a not, not this weekend. Andy. I think he's a really no, good chance. I, really. t- I think he's a really good chance this weekend. Um, because if you act, if you go back and watch that grade one, he was with the leaders up until the second last, and he just he just faded quite late on. He was running an absolute blinder. Um, now they've given him a mark of one forty two, and I'd say connections are just salivating. Um, probably about the I'm assuming the Irish Grand National. Um, that's the race you you'd probably have to run him in. But getting beaten two lengths by Gabinaco, uh, running Lieutenant Command close, um, well beaten by Fury Road in the end, but he was right there too out. Um, yeah. and his rider couldn't claim in that race, could he? No, uh, Paddy O'Hanlon couldn't. Seven pound claimer riding him as well. Um, I just think he's a, he could he could be better than people think. Um, he, he was uh, Vanillier only beat him a quarter of a length last time out. Now Vanillier probably had an off day. Um, I think this test will probably suit him more. Um, you got fourteen runners here. Uh, it's a great field. Statler, we I don't think Statler or on baton um i don't think either of them won very strong races uh under uh in their respective chases um so with, with that said I, I think they they're probably watching briefs uh fury road with his 11 12 i like, he's probably not he's probably not running here um and i, I i'd be kind of skeptical um on a good few jiggins town horses running here run while fred might um, it will put him right for for whatever race they're going for, um, and then Farouk Delane, uh, he's probably the most likely. I I probably say actually, um, Run Well Fred probably has enough experience, but for me, um, Max Flamingo, he's going to be a huge price. He was twenty eight in the Grade One. He's probably going to be twelves or sixteens here, um, because Francis Casey trains him, and I could really see him this race i like there's 14 runners there's probably going to be eight or nine um and if if that's the case i think he i think he'd be placed um well, and why, I don't why, think, though, Andy? Why, why would you go and win this when you, could well, you wouldn't you wouldn't necessarily oh. need to go win it if, if you're placing this your mark's not really going to change no, you're probably not be affected at all no. yeah also you're giving another another yeah, well, so one forty two. You, you, you told us to back a loser earlier. I said before. You get back a loser back. the next day. You back. You back the and loser the next day. Back this, back this fella to not win. <laughs> <laughs> I I think like even if he does win, he could easily run in the Irish National because what? Funny enough, one forty two mightn't get you in there. Um, I like there's a good chance like that is such a competitive race these yeah. days that one forty two mightn't actually get you in the Irish National, um, which is absolutely bonkers. Um, and I, I just looking back through his form, like it sickens me that April 2021, he was scraping in and a handicap beaten Millen to one who I'm beating my head off the wall. Um, oh, he, he's let me down the last twice now. Now, in fairness, Leprosan wasn't his fault. He let me down a fairy house. Um, and that's why I just, uh, that horse probably does have one in him and he's probably going to be the death there, of me. The, but... the, the race of fairy house was a rated, they're tricky races though, Andy, because some of them mm. haven't got, Proper handicap match yet. Oh, I don't know how yeah. they will play those rated races. Yeah. But I, they're I usually good they're really. usually good to follow. Um and yeah. Steve probably wants to get his mark in there. Probably should have let him. Is, is Steve gone, is he? Yeah, he's gone. He's gone to bed. Don't he's you worry. Well, he's getting tucked in now. Mm-hmm. But no, yeah. um Max Flamingo, I'd be I'd be actually pretty sweet on him to run a big, big racer. Um even even if he does win. He's so progressive that you could still run in the Irish National. Uh, like mm. there is plenty of races for him. Like there is the Irish National. There's a um a a, a novice handicap chase at Punchestown. Um, you, there there's loads. Like there's plenty of options for him. And and Dex right, he will land a big pot. And he's he's taken the chase and so well. Um, and yeah, no, he's just a lovely, lovely horse. The thing about that novice handicap at Punchestown, uh, and he is Willie. Has something in there, yeah. <laughs> well, what are you bumping into exactly? Yeah, yeah. Oh God, Christ knows what has really just you know one of his who just hasn't got it together. Turns up there, like it, was, that's, uh, yeah, that's the one that's staying for lunch. One, yeah, 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 and <laughs> real steel, <laughs> yeah, real steel. <laughs> yeah. Sick of <laughs> he's not well, that really. One of them, he's good. not well, he's been stopping, <laughs> he's been using, he's been using Briny Frost. Because nobody in Britain would suspect Chi to stop Franco de Park. 
and then he tries to pull it off in a Tiesti. We definitely can't say that. Oh, can't say can that. Say that. that. No, no. I, I'll be up in front of the BHJ next week. Please. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You'll be getting ten pounds on you. Uh, right, selections are Max Flamingo for Andrew Declan. Is it Vanilla for yourself? No, I I don't really know. I'm really I'm excited Waiting to see him bent on, but I I think like from on what we know, Fury Road ha, has the best form. Um, yeah. we probably don't know enough about the likes of him bent on, um, Statler, but Fury Road has the beatings of Vanilla, who we know is definitely turning up. And yeah, look, I'm 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 not encouraging anyone to have a bet this far out. We see what turns up, no. but on form. You'd have to say Fury Road has shown us the most. Yeah. Thanks very much, Dak. Final race we're going to cover tonight is the Limestone Lad, the Grade 3 at Nace on Sunday. It's the 210. Um, some nice horses in here, in particular, one that we're really looking forward to seeing. You know which one it is, boys. It's third year. Come on, third year. I say third year. <laughs> Out again. I'm looking forward to seeing me again. <laughs> <laughs> Not you. <laughs> Oh, there is some nice runners in here, though. Um, the little yank got the week off, did he? Yeah, he's he's, he's getting arrested. He has well. COVID. <laughs> They've tag teamed him in. They've tag tagged each other now. It's been <laughs> time. Um, cast mate in the for no mead, the nice horse there. Durasso, some others. Cashback, who found his uh, winning thread last time. Saint Felician, mm. the unbeaten Gordon Elliott's in there for Robco. Uh, Petit Mouchoir, wow, rolling back the years there. He's an age eleven now. Um, some of the nice ones in there, Whiskey Sour, all the way down the bottom to Wolf Prince. Let's come to you first, Andy, on this one, then. This race is so confusing. You have your your lad now at, at the top of the weights, Durasso. Where are we playing today, lads? Um, well, well, this time, Durasso, it's a two-mile grade three hurdle. And, and, and tomorrow, it might be a two-and-a-half-mile handicap chase. And this has been, uh, this has been won by champion hurdle winners. Yeah. Um, Send it to Edna. Yeah, no, it's it's incredible. Um, no, the the thing is, you literally look through this whole field: Durasso, Caskmate, Ferdia, San Felician, Cashback, Felix Deji. Um, look, I I don't need to read them all out. There's one thing that every single one of these horses share, and the common goal <laughs> is mm. it's the spring handicap. Like, what the hell is going to win this race? Like you look at you, you look through you look through this whole field and you're just like, okay, now that that's probably a Coral Cup horse. No, no that's gonna go to Punchestown. Oh Jesus, no, that that's probably a fairy house type. He'll probably be on the boat to Punchestown as well. Like they'll all be eyeballing each other. You go for it. Now you go for it. Now you, you um, but look, which you, I which opens it up for thirty? Yeah, no, the, yeah, possibly. Um, mm. yeah, for to get about twenty five pound in the weights if he finishes close to a few days, but um. Yeah. Look, the one He's trying the to come down twenty five before yeah. the summer. <laughs> <laughs> the obvious, the obvious one you want to see win this race, obviously, is San Felician, um, because he's unbeaten. Mm. Uh, very ve- like Gore, he actually isn't. I don't think is he. He, he won. Thir- he won on the thirteenth of May. Is is he a novice? No, th- was that th- was that a hurdle race in France? He won, was it? It was, yeah, it was a hurdle yeah, race. Hurdle, yeah, I'm not, right. Like that was 2021. I, I'm not sure if he's a novice. Um, he's not in any of the novice betting, and he's in an open race here. Uh, the limestone lads an open race. Like, surely it wouldn't be. You would. I don't think be, he's a novice anymore now. Yeah, I. No. It's. Was it a hurdle race? He won, or was it an AQPS? No, 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 it was. It was a, a condition full, dress. full blown hurdle race that he won. And no. um, obviously, being very difficult to campaign as as a result of that. Um, he's the one you'd want to see win because he, he clearly, without a shadow of a doubt, has the most upside in this whole field. Uh, Felix Deji's going to do as usual, probably go off in front and then pull himself up after two hurdles. Um, Petit Mouchoir is probably being trained for the county hurdle again. He, he ran a blinder in that last year. Uh, Whiskey Sarah is the same. Wolf Prince is the same. Uh, um, Cask Mate's probably the same. Um and then the few of them, like if you're getting into the one thirties, you're probably not good enough. Uh, the the one that I'd probably be tentatively going with, and it kind of depends on his price, is cashback. He kind of got unfair rep for winning last time out because that race was known as the the five hundred and seventy thousand per uh per, purchase classic getaway getting beaten. Um, who was way too keen and it was very testing ground. But the what what basically was happening was Caspe just outstayed him 
um, and settled better and jumped better and traveled better. And the experience kind of caught him out. He's a 156 rated chaser and he stays on his feet, which has been shown time and time again. Uh, like He's a very, very talented chaser until he fell three times in a row. What was he rated uh, over? What's he rated over hurdles? He never actually got a hurdle. He he's, never officially, he's never officially had a hurdles mark. Um, I would assume mid mid to mid mid 140s i'd say is probably what he's ran to um and he is what like a 10 year old now there, there's chances for him like if he runs to the mid 140s here and they're not training him for a spring handicap he's probably going to be hard to be here i'd imagine uh, like he could go off in front he could probably get a very 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 soft lead uh, because as i said a lot of these are going to have spring targets um now, with that said, winning this race mightn't get you mullered in the handicap because they're all of similar ability. I would assume, even though he has a penalty, Jurassic was probably going to be favourite with his mark of 150. Um, San Felician, with his unexposed um, profile, probably be in there as well, second or third in. And then you're going to have cashback. Yeah. And he's probably going to be the value of the race because he is likely raced over hurdles. He's getting his confidence back. I think his form of beating Classic Getaway is fair form it's 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 hard to kind of critique it but the likelihood is it's it's probably a, a bare minimum fair form um mm. and if he's in a winning groove again and he's able to replicate to an extent his ability over fences get to within maybe i don't know eight pounds of that uh that would put him right right there for this particular race and he'd be my selection here there's a huge con confidence boost the last time that one mm. um for the horse uh declan you who would you say cashback, Andy? Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, look, it is it is a funny race. Um, I'm not sure it's always like this. I guess Bart Allen won this on the way to winning. Yeah, the beat, beat Wicklow Brave, I think. Uh, yeah, awesome. Wicklow Brave. I was closing on him, but um, mm. you know, I just wonder what sort of a performance Saint Felician could put up here. Um, mm. Now that. That race he won, I'm not sure was the, the, the form is too strong. Um, the one he won in Ireland in November. No. But look, we don't know. He could be anything. It would be great to see him winning. And, you know, uh, look, if he was mine and he won, and he won really well, or he would be. He's not, do you say he's not entries for Cheltenham, is he? No. Um. No. Not at the minute, no. No, you, you wouldn't. You wouldn't want to be going there, really, with a horse. Start an experience, you know, um, you, you'd be going to fairly hands or punches down. Yeah, look, the Rasso. Sorry, tell a lie. He does have an entry in the champion hurdle. Oh, you, you, you wouldn't be. You wouldn't. I'm the Irish champion hurdle. Well, he won't run in that if he's running no. here. Mm. Unless, unless, unless he scoots in hard held. I, I, or he, or he takes it, or he mm -hmm. takes the race and well, mm. you know. If if he's an entry in the, the Irish Champion Hurdle and he won this race well, head up that night, head up the next morning, and was bouncing all week, it'd be hard not to run him. Mm, you know, if, yeah. if, if he if he got home from Nice on Sunday and put the fish finger straight into the toaster, you know, you, you'd be thinking about running, wouldn't you? You know, if he head up. The car yeah. the next morning. I mean, that race at Garland, you've mentioned it, Deck. He might not have been the best race. And he, he won with the head in the chest, though, didn't he? he was he looked yeah, very they're hard to gauge race. those races. They, they really yeah. are hard to gauge when Slip of the Tongue. Well. Slip of the Tongue ran all right behind T Hoopo and Quilix. Infant in the Cold was toured, wasn't he? Like yeah. he was yeah. Yeah. you know, I like Infant the Cold. I think Flat I might have, have, might have tipped them up for some. Flat Ooh. handicap or something. Oh, Dundalk, handicap like, on a Friday. I think like tipped him up for some group races on the, on the yeah, yeah. Yeah, I yeah. think he, he ran behind Broom a couple of times on the flat. Mm, like, yeah, you know. he, yeah, he he's ran and he was a good flat horse. So he, he like he was no mug. Yeah, but um, I I just don't know. But it's hard to tell when they win well and the form doesn't work out great. It's it's a bit of a it messes with your head a little bit because you don't know what way to to gauge it. Um. But Team Mouchoir couldn't put anyone off like that. 
he's as honest as the day is long. Um, what would you do with him? Because he's, was... still, he's still sort of thriving, isn't he? Like County? County heard like Anya. Yeah. He'd be top weight though, wouldn't he? He's... Mm. Hey, he was second or third in it last year. Oh, um, top weight. Ran a, ran a blinder, yeah. Yeah. Um, look, Cass May is a horse I, I really, really like. Had his problems. Um, no May got him back. He was second in, in a Royal Bond. He was second to Zana here at Down Royal. He gave him, I think he got he got five pound from Zana here. And I just think, I, I think he made a mistake at the second and, and I sort of gave him too much to do then. I don't think he ran as badly as, as the winning distance said. And Zana here has been second to um, Sharjah twice. And he was only beaten, you know, a neck the last day with Sharjah getting all his conditions, getting Leperstown, getting good ground. I think Castmate's a really likeable horse. Uh, and I, I'd love him to see I'd love to see him win a race like this. And I think he's more than capable of winning a race like this. Like he he got he got I know he got five pound when he was beaten, but you know, Zana here's a grade one horse you'd have to say now. He he's running the Morgiana. He's he's running um Whatever you call it, there, some other hotel race at uh, Leperstown at Christmas, but it was another great one. So that farm's not too bad, even though we got the weight. And this is what a great tree. Mm. Not an awful lot to beat, really. You know, there's not an awful lot to beat. We don't know anything about the same Felician. Um, Flame Bear is in here, but he's declared for Saturday. Um. It's strange that he's entered here. There's yeah. nothing, nothing really. Yeah, so if Castmate turns up, I, you know, yeah, I, I fancy Castmate. All right, thank you very much, Declan. Castmate for Declan and for Andrew, cash back. Uh-huh. Right, let's bring that brings us nearly to the end. Uh, we can now, boys. Is there anything that we really fancy elsewhere? Can I just mention the um. I don't know whether you guys, you probably didn't even look at it because it's over here and you hate our racing, but you know what I mean? Um, <laughs> don't hate your racing. Just yeah, oh, yeah, well, you, yeah. If, if it was if it was better, we could talk, like, we wouldn't slag it off. It's not we hate it. Yeah. It's just, it's, it's just going through, it's it's going through the doldrums. It's going through the motions moment. at the minute. And where there's ups and downs, there was, there was reasons when we had you no know, chasers here. We sold our chasers. You know, they came out of a point to point field. They were they were they were bought in the point to point field by British owners. Yeah. But there's no Tommy hit the nail like on the head really. at the moment. And I seen Tommy's comment there, he's like he's Yeah, he hit the nail on the head earlier. You know, and that's sort of touching on what I was saying. It being an industry more than a sport. Yeah. And, and maybe I do mean it more. You know, maybe that applies to Ireland more than, than it does in Britain because they well, Britain seem to think they rely on the bookmakers more over here. Irish racing was back almost immediately after it, it was. It was everything closed down and Torres raced the week after COVID started because it's an industry. It wasn't relying on anything else. It's jobs. It's jobs in this country, and I suppose that does go back to even the selling of horses. And that brings me back to why there was an excuse for if if we were to have well I think the year I was born there was a blank year at Cheltenham for Ireland. Um in eighty nine Galmoy was the only winner, you know, the Galmoy hurdle was on today. But there was reasons for that. We were a third world country here in the eighties, like we were poor, we had to sell, we sold the horses, but there's no reason, you know, there's no reason for it in Britain. No. There's there's no logical reason like that. It it runs a bit deeper than Somebody needs to get in there and sort it out. Somebody anyway, do you want to hear my tips? <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course we do. Uh, I just wanted to touch on the bumper uh, at Cheltenham. Um, it's the Alan Swimbank Mers bumper. I think it's a cracking uh, bumper for this year. And I'm, yeah, I was just, I'm really interested in the Milton Harris horse, which is called um, uh, Mullenbeg. Um, he ran a cracking, a really cracking race first time out. Um, after coming from over from the point to point yards at Ludlow, he absolutely won with his head and chest. I was I was really impressed. Milton's having a great year this year. I think he I think I read somewhere that he's had like thirty eight winners or thirty nine winners 
And over the past like five seasons, he's had a total of 68. So this year he's 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 really stepped up. He's he's purchasing this year has been second to none. So uh, Milton Harris, fair play to you. Where you're finding these horses from, keep doing it because you he's had a great year. So I hope he can get another one in Mullenbeg on um in that Alan Swimbank Mers bumper at Cheltenham on Saturday. Very impressed at Ludlow. He'd, he'd be worth uh, 10 to 1. 10 to 1 she is. Um, take a bit of each way on that anyway. Uh, only other, That's the only one from me, apart from the one that I mentioned before with Captain Ord in the Skybet chase. You, Declan? Um, I, I've mentioned this one. It, it probably won't be any price. shouldn't be. Um, shouldn't be any price. It's flame bearer. He's entered at Mace. He, I don't know if you remember the race. He, he ran in the maiden hurdle at Mace. Uh, Paul Townend rode Bron for Willie Mullins in the double green, and it was dangerous riding, in my opinion. Uh, it was very, very dangerous. You, you know, the way in Ireland, there's not always a rail the whole way, but you know, Paul done everything he could to put him off the track. Um, yeah, that was it was lethal actually. Yeah, you know, uh, uh, flame bear. Oh yeah, now look, I'm a little bit sore because I backed him that day, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking to my in a little bit. You know, get rid of that Paul Townend fella, get him out of here. Um, <laughs> he wouldn't have got the race anyway because he ended up finishing tour because of it. But I would definitely, I I would upgrade and pass Killer Mode anyway. But he's running another maiden hurdle. You'd imagine he'll be odds on after that performance. Like, you know, when you put in the performance, when you say you should have won a maid in Ireland, you know, you're obviously a good horse. And to get the entry at Nace, they obviously think a lot of him. But if he's if he's odds against, I'd be saying back him. Um Fairy House, that's Fairy House 250, Fairy House 105. I I haven't I, look, I, I was busy today, but I, I was looking at this horse, where's Frankie? He did win over hurdles off 89, and he's turning up here off 89. I need to have another look at it. I rushed this a little bit. But I've <laughs> I, been doing all right with this lately, I Andy. Right. I, I've done, been doing a good bit of homework here. But where's Frankie? I, I'll put it up. I, I'll send you, Chris, to put up on the Twitter. After Thanks, I have a look at it. And I did send one to Andy earlier. Ryan Stone could be very interesting. Um, he got a back over hurdles. Now, it was after running that. He might run an Albert Barkley or something and got a, quite a high hurdle mark. Um, but he's a chase mark now. He he ran this season. He's obviously very difficult to train. He is a Manju. He could be a total nutcase. <laughs> but he could be, You just don't know. He He's <laughs> he's red and green and yellow anyway with a white cap. So, <laughs> I, don't know, uh, I don't know. I don't know. It could be some plot job. Uh, mm. He's very interesting. Again, I need to look a little bit harder at him and, and probably watch the market. But that's. I actually didn't even write that down. Do you have the time of that well one? Well done. Andy? Well done, Dick. You said it was 105, did you? No, no, oh, right. no. He's in the other one. That's Sunday, right? He's in the 105. No, there's too many bad cases. Um, Look, there's two horses I've put up before here. Heard you. Uh, you talk to 113, Drena. I think he has lots of ability. He's another horse that's been on for a long time, but he came back and he was second. Uh, but I don't think he ran much of a race the last day. Uh, oh. Huntington, 12, 25. I put him up last week to run at Marco Raisin, but was cancelled. He's probably... <laughs> he's all gave me stick because he, he, he got back then. But the time I was... Uh, <laughs> it was odds on, but it's Captain Brownfield. Um, <laughs> um, I, haven't, I haven't even looked at prices. So I don't know what prices they are, but look, I, I think they're. Oh my gosh! Well. I will come back to you on the handicap. Chase, the, uh, it's it's half twelve at Ferry House's Rhinestone deck. Rhinestone. Mm. I I'd let the market guide you on that one. Now, don't everyone go out and start backing it and and. You know, we'd start shortening. Carol's Cottage, yeah. Let, let other people do that. And then I, I'd follow the mark on that one. But yeah, where's Frankie could be interesting. Cheers, Deck. Yeah, five to six, Captain Broomfield. So, Deck, hang your head in shame. You're turning into Stephen, you every week. <laughs> what about you, Captain Broomfield? You need to shop around. You get even money. Where, where can I find that even money? Don't mention it. Find it for me. 
All right, don't back him then. Don't back, back a loser if you want. Oh, hey, I'll have a go, mate. I'll have a go. Under yourself. Right, Deck, what's that? It's another each way Mongolian on the weekend, is it? <laughs> 50 selections later. Um, <laughs> no, it, it's one selection and one selection only. Um, yeah, it's it's 155 at Cheltenham. It's actually also a Milton Harris horse. Um, Chris, Hang on. this is the one that's going. Oh, no, so it's hot hot right going on yeah, I might, I might enter a competition with this one. We'll see. Oh, um, <laughs> but, um, yeah, no, Jack Amara is the horse I, I'm with here. Uh, 133, a horse that's really been thriving this year. Um, he was a little bit unlucky not to get not to get his head in front a little bit sooner. Um, but he eventually did get his head in front, beating Mr. Coffee at, at Kempton on uh, Boxing Day in the UK on Stevens's Day here. He did not jump too well, though. He travelled strongly, but didn't jump well. And as a result, only got three pounds for that effort. Um. The form hasn't really been tested bar the fourth placed horse, Danny Kerwin, winning in facile fashion at Wincanton earlier this week. Could you say that's a form boost? Probably not. Uh, Danny Kerwin was four to six and kind of did what a four to six shot should do. Um, mm. he, he had his he had the run of the race, just jumped very much in his comfort zone, jumped fence to fence really, really well. Um, as an isolated incident, it was an impressive run by Danny Kirwan, but like at the, you know, you're taking it at face value. Could you be back and Jack Amara off the back of that? Probably not. Uh, the reason I'm back in Jack Amara is I think the track was suiting way better than Kempton. He showed a very much a game attitude to hold off Mr. Coffee, who looked like he was traveling better than him in the home straight. And if he had jumped a couple of fences better, particularly early on, he probably would have won a little bit further. And then you're talking about a six, seven, eight, nine pounds instead of his three pounds. So I think it's a seven year old just going the right way. Um, and a 12 to one in admittedly a more competitive race. I think it just represents a bit of each way value. Um, mm. So he'd be the only horse I'm backing this week. I'm, I'm basically keeping the, the powder dry for the uh, Dublin racing festival. But I do think Jack Amara is a, is a horse on the up. Um, this race is a, um, along with the other, the novice handicap chase, uh, they do point towards the festival. Funnily enough, like Steve was mentioning, simply the bets beaten, I think, Imperial Alcazar. Um, and a few other, I think Hunt Ball might have won on this meeting and then went on to win at the festival, even though he won like 50 races that year. Um, but it, it is a meeting that can yield handicap results. Um, and with the ground being a little bit better than it usually is, um, the handicaps probably will be worth watching. Yeah. Giving a peach of a ride last time by Danny, wasn't it? Yeah. Jack Amar. Thank you very much. Lauren's saying, go on, Andy, do the competition. I think I will do, great chat. Well, Seen looking at the personalities the young, yeah. this week. Jesus Christ, some personalities yeah. on that. I don't, <laughs> don't be mean. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? Will you squeeze it into 60 seconds, Andy? Yeah. He's gonna well, have you to. definitely wouldn't. Yeah, that's, no, that's, where, that's the reason we're an hour and a half every bloody week. <laughs> <laughs> you give it out. <laughs> Unless it was Hookham or famous name, yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. Right. Thanks very much, boys. Uh yeah, well done to Sarah Breen and won the competition for the two tickets. Uh thanks everyone who's joined uh, us tonight. Thanks for all the comments. Thanks for everybody joining in. Another great podcast for us. And uh I hope we all have a great weekend, whatever you're up to. Anyone going racing this weekend? Probably go Sunday. Um, I'm in work Saturday, so mm. try to get the nice on Sunday. If I'm not hung over, I might go to nice. We'll see. Yeah, well, yeah. Come I'll on. give you a show. Give us a show. Let me down yeah. again last minute. <laughs> <laughs> he was on his way back from Wexford. Hmm. Yeah, Lauren's going to Cheltenham. to Cheltenham. Lauren's going to Cheltenham. Yeah, let's take some photographs, Lauren. Uh, thanks very much, guys. I will see you all again next week. Thanks.